Venture capital is traditionally, or has been traditionally, an industry filled with people from finance backgrounds. Um, and that increasingly isn't the case where you get you know, a lot of people with entrepreneurial backgrounds um, instead. And you are a great example of that. You've started three companies, um, probably most famous for Half.com. What, you know, what about that experience helps you um, deliver value as a venture capitalist? So I, look, I have to say there are VCs who have never started companies themselves who have delivered a ton of value, sure. right? And I respect a lot. So, you know, at least so I can only speak from my own experience. And from my experience, I think that I get a few things. The first is empathy. Um, you know, you sat in the chair. Yeah. You understand what it's like dealing with imperfect information, having to make decisions that you know, you know that you're not sure is this the right thing. You know, being a founder is lonely. And, you know, and oftentimes, you know, the insecurities that you have aren't ones, you don't have many people to talk to about that, right? You have a management team, but you're not gonna walk into your management team every day and say, gee, I don't know if we're doing the right, right. thing. You can't really and, talk to your investors. And you have a board often. and investors yeah. and say, gee, I'm really conflicted. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell knows if this is good? Like, you just don't, you know, like, so you have very few people you could talk to. And I think the, the, just the understanding that comes from having sat in the chair, um, from understanding the fact that you have to make decisions with imperfect information, understanding the urgency, understanding sort of just the, the, the challenges. Um, so, so it doesn't come, I'd say, you know, so I thought, you know, have there been specific instances where I think, oh wow, I saw what to do in this case? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what, 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 what I really end up appreciating is the fact that I just know how hard it is to yeah. be an entrepreneur. Um, and, and so at least for me, um, you know, I hope that, that that sort of, at least I felt that that really has impacted the way that I interact, but also just my whole approach towards entrepreneurs. You know, as a firm, you know, one of the benefits of being a seed stage firm is we're very aligned with the founders, right? You know, we, we've never voted against a founder in any vote in over 200 companies, you know, because um, we've built a model that says, you know, at the stage that we invest, we're investing in founders. Sure. So um, it just, it's a space where I'm most comfortable. Was that switch, um, you know, from becoming an entrepreneur to a venture capitalist? I mean, those are very different skill sets. How, how difficult was that for you? It, it's very hard to switch. Yeah. Um, you know, I look back at some of my early investments and, you know, I, I would remember go, getting a pitch from an entrepreneur and immediately I would sort of look at what they were saying, but I'd start deconstructing it down. They were pitching a recipe, but I'd start deconstructing it down to the ingredients, right? So I'd say, oh, okay, so there, you know, there's chocolate, there's sugar, there's cream, there's milk, there's whipped cream. I could make a great chocolate mousse here, you know, forgetting about the fact that they came in pitching me a brownie. You know, do you know what I'm saying? And like, right. So they came in with one recipe, but I would start sort of trying to rearrange the recipe. Your founder's mind would Yeah, I would start saying yeah. like, wow, that's like, there's some really cool ingredients here, but you just want to like, you know, you don't want to whip it like that. You want to cook it like that. And, and I would write a check thinking I was funding chocolate mousse and they would think I funded their brownie company. And, and you know, it, we'd, we'd find ourselves, you know, very, you know, in a very unaligned position, you yeah. know, ultimately cooking something that tasted horrible. So, you know, you know, for me, part of the biggest learn lesson and biggest learning is just realizing the role of a VC. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be a good coach, you could be a good mentor, advisor, um, but ultimately the CEO is driving the bus. And that founder, you, you have, you know, while you could give your founder your point of view and ideas, you're really backing their view of the business they want to build, not your view of the right. business you want to build. And, and you know, I, I tell my, uh, the entrepreneurs that I'm working with, I say, look, I think I owe you two things. I owe you my candid opinion based on my experience, based on everything, you know, whatever, whatever knowledge I have, I owe it to you. Whether I agree with you or disagree, you know, the reason I hope you picked me is because you want that input. You want that advice. The second thing I owe you is my support. And after I've given you my opinion, you have my support. You don't have to do what I, you know, you, you get to do what you want to do. Um, 
but you don't get my support without my opinion, right? Like, you know, it's a package deal. I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you why I think it. I maybe argue, might, might argue with you vociferously and try to, you know, try to change your mind if I think you're going in the wrong direction. But ultimately, it's your call. 